Yeah. Uh, I guess my question for you, Dustin, do you have any friends that are trying to do this along with you, or are you kind of by yourself in terms I have, of? I have two friends that have been in the Forex thing with me since I've been in it. Um, okay. But they're not in the same area as me. They both moved away. So I have one that moved to Cali and then one that moved to Colorado. But we still do our late night calls. We'll get in the market at 12, the 12 to 1-ish, because that's when the London sessions open. Mm-hmm. That has the most volatility usually. And our trading plan will go with, like, um, it says manipulation, accumulation, and distribution. Mm-hmm. And that's who I've been rocking out with is just two other friends. But we sometimes just do calls. It's, it's on and off with them. And they have their jobs, too. They get busy. I get busy. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the hard part, right, is, um, yeah, trying to balance when you can actually trade. Luckily for Forex, though, I mean, you have from Sunday for you, I guess, Sunday just after midday to, um, I guess, Friday, Friday. 2 like p.m., right? Yeah. yeah. Like um, yeah so luckily it's 24-7 between those, well, 24 hours a day between those times. Um, I guess 24 five, I guess, if you want to call it that, or, um, so that's, that's interesting. That, that helps a little bit, but yeah, the Forex market is, is pretty volatile. And I've, I've also wanted to dabble in it as well, but on a much smaller scale than what I currently utilize as my main portfolio. So would like to get your education, uh, on that as well in the future. Maybe, maybe when I message you back through Instagram or anything like that. Um, but I guess, is there any big questions you had for us um because you were going to ask me a whole bunch of questions through instagram and more than happy to get not only just my opinion but also kyle's as well what was your reason for starting uh investing uh to generate uh well originally it was to get rich quick i'm not gonna (laughs) lie you know what i mean and i think that that's i think everyone's initial uh right is is they're like, oh man, like I, I'm gonna be the one that knocks oh. it out of the park. So to be transparent, 100%. I mean, that was the thought, and then I guess my thought process matured a little bit after realizing that I wasn't gonna win every trade and um, that penny stocks wasn't working for me. So it took a little bit of maturing and and persistence in educating myself through reading a lot of articles and teaching myself what you know key fundamental economic uh, uh, things are in a company and what companies like real estate utilizes this metric as a, a key thing. And uh, let's say like uh, oil and gas companies utilize a different metric to, to analyze how well their business is doing. And then also learning how to read balance sheets. And, and so it really just took a lot of persistence and eventually landed on dividend investing being the one that was for me. Um, and the reason being I switched to trying to get rich quick to something that was conservative, something that could help supplement income to the point where my thought process got to, I eventually want to pay myself through passive income so that I could do what I wanted to do. And that wasn't necessarily to quit my job because I like what I do as a, as an engineer. Um, but if I wanted to do something else, whether it was become a full-time investor, become a personal financial advisor uh, or anything like that, it gave me options that if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't sacrifice a full-time income because I had saved a portion of that to make those decisions and at least be able to feed my basic expenses uh, while I was trying to sort out some of those things and also be kind of what you mentioned earlier, just make sure that I have a strong foundation so that if I wanted to take a month off of work or, or had to help take care of somebody for a month or two while they were in the hospital, I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, an income. And so while I'm still far away from that, um, that's kind of where I based where I wanted to get to about four or five years ago. And the reason why I've been so adamant about investing over the past couple of years. So, Kyle, I don't know what your thoughts are. <laughs> um, I 
I, I think I got on the stock market for a few reasons. It's more or less just because I wanted to get involved in other businesses. I uh, like I, I said, I was in debt at your age. I just finished paying off my uh, loans when I was 23. But after I pay my loans off, I quickly learned what it's like to actually run a business, and it's a little bit more different than the imagination of just being able to spend 20 grand and then figure it out after. Mm-hmm. Um, but the stock market to me was just like I could find interest in things that I was interested in, and the fact that I could just easily reach out and be an owner in it blew my mind. Uh, but I got really, really lucky, and I'm, I'm glad it didn't it didn't destroy me because I made uh, quite a bit of money day trading like Canopy Growth Corp in the early days. Like I made a quick two thousand dollars off a small investment, and uh, I got really cocky really fast. Did a bunch of other day trading stuff, um, but I, I just I kind of quickly moved away from it and went long term. And uh, like I said, I got real lucky because I then again bought a lot of Canopy Growth Corp, which made me um, which one of my bigger wins. But the, the the best thing about it was if I just bought the two stocks, the first two stocks I ever bought, I would have made way more money than any of the day trading I've ever tried or any, like I've moved a lot of positions because obviously I'm a little bit in and out of my portfolio. But uh, when I look at the first two companies, man, if I if I just did the Warren Buffett style thing and just said, look, I don't have a lot of money right now. I really like these companies. They really speak to me. And I just loaded the boat with all the money I had and just walked away and then focused on something else. I would have been way better off. So my new philosophy that's taken me five years to kind of get adjusted to is just find companies I really, really like, get, do like a year or two, scale them up, do cost averaging in, get them for like a nice five. Well, again, depending on your portfolio size, because I'm at the level where I'm trying to get positions between five and 10,000 and then just build them up and either set up a drip and move on or just collect the dividends and start buying new stocks and then just keep building those passive income sources because each one of those companies is going to make, you know, $500 extra a year. The, the goal is to get them up to a certain scale where they become so passive that uh, you, you start feeling those effects, right? Um, but it's, it's hard to say, man, because I started with day trading. I day traded a lot of companies back when Trump was just becoming president. I remember Drys, the shipping industry. I talk about those sometimes, but uh, it's a different world, man. I never got involved in Forex or anything. Used to do a lot with gold. Uh, used to do the gold thing, but it wasn't passive enough either. Uh, it wasn't passive enough either. Um, so, I mean, there's, it, it, you're going to find a path, but as you begin to build wealth and you want to start focusing on these tools as your passive, I don't know how much you want to actually day trade. I still watch day traders that are trading millions of dollars successfully, but I just, I have a hard time projecting like any image I have of it actually working over a long term, because sooner or later they're quit too, mm-hmm. right? And the day they get sloppy is the day, you know, that $100,000 trade wipes them out or whatever. So, I mean, you got to be careful. Mm-hmm. Not, not necessarily. Obviously, there's protection. I mean, you got to know what you're doing with volume and make sure you have decent stop losses and protection in place and maybe some call options or something if you're doing swing trades. But um, I don't know. I could get a little more technical, but you don't do options or anything, do you? Options? No, but probably a little bit different than dealing with Forex. But you should be able to deal with Forex options too, no? I, I have no idea. I don't know what options are. So options, options are just – it's being able to purchase – a uh, uh, hundred shares of a company or borrow a hundred shares of a company and predict whether or not or you're forecasting whether it will increase in value or decrease in value and so what you're basically doing is instead of buying and selling a stock you're kind of trying to figure out at what price you would pay for the opportunity to purchase or sell a stock at a certain price within the next say 30 days 90 days two years um, and so it, it puts a little bit more of a time constraint on it. And so it gets a little bit more complex with respect to the fact that you need to know what the um, intrinsic volatility is, which means like how quickly it rises and goes up and down. And also, um, obviously, there's time decay as- aspect of things. So if you buy something and you say you buy an option for next week, um, and you want to sell, let's say, AT&T or the option to buy AT&T for $30 uh, next week, the fact that it's at $38 and it's next, you know, you have like, I guess, uh, 13 days until that happens, it's not going to be very good from a price standpoint. And so uh, the yeah, price and- of that option then goes sort of down. Yeah, it uh, options are basically like it's it's similar to shorting on both ends of it. But people like hedge funds especially use it to protect themselves from the downside because you can buy a thousand dollars worth of call options if say you own a hundred thousand dollars worth of this one company, and that company decides to drop. Well, the thousand dollar call option could be worth 
10 or 15 fold and you could end up making like 50 grand just as much as if it were to go up you'd make the same amount but you don't have to put as much it's 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 an accompli- it basically it's a an overcomplicated version of an insurance plan for most people in, uh, in investing uh, but I, a little bit of a side tangent here just because we were talking uh you're talking about gold there briefly i just wanted to answer all good because uh, she was on the uh, the stream not too long ago and I, I actually posted that up on the website uh, that, that streams on our website. I thought it was an absolutely wonderful uh, interview. But she's just saying uh, about me because I just look at, I liquidated a bunch of my mom's precious metals because uh, I, I sold all of my gold a little while ago. I think I have a couple of bits still floating around, but uh, mm. I got rid of it uh, because I'd rather have a passive income investment that I don't have to, to rely on. And I also convinced my mom at this point because it's, it's up quite a bit right now in Canadian mm. dollars, especially. You get around uh, $2,000 for an ounce of gold. So we went over to the precious metal exchange. So Yes, uh, the people that we sold to are as legit as it gets, and they pretty much only buy like a percent under spot or something. Um, it, it's you got to be careful selling that stuff too, right? Liquidating is a huge ordeal, um, just because if you're trying to sell it online, you don't really want to tell somebody, "Oh, look, I have 10, 20 ounces of gold. I'm selling. Want to come and see it?" Uh, so I mean, we kind of want to find those legit places, but it's good because I publicize it to show you guys how it works. But at the same time, I do it. After it's already been done, so it's already gone. <laughs> uh, all right, side so side tangent, side tangent. But yeah, anyways, call options. Uh, that's all kind of boring stuff, uh, but you'll probably find out about because most people that day trade absolutely love the idea of them because it's pretty much the quickest way to get some fast upside, but obviously a lot of risk at the same time. Um, but yeah, so I mean, um, I kind of lost focus on what we we're going on about here because that. <laughs> but um, 